Welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My girlfriend, unfortunately, is not here because she's working, but if you saw the intro, there are two of us. I'd like to wish everyone a very happy Cinco de Mayo. A little Mexi Cherry Cola. Nice. Salsa and guac burgers. Yeah, very good. That's right. So good. Bonus video, I'm going to show you guys how I made those. Right at the end. Well, I'm here to talk about NXT. I don't think you need the burger meat in my mouth. NXT came to the Italian Beach today on Cinco de Mayo. So hopefully I'm going to get this video up for you probably sometime tomorrow. If not tonight, we'll, we'll see how things go. It takes, it takes a while to do a lot of video editing. A lot of good matches to talk about. A lot of good action to see, too. Oh. Got to show, show off these. Ooh. Salsa fries. Guacamole. Pretty darn good. Watch down with some more Mexico. Here in Mexico. And all in the bonus episode towards the end. So thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and share. Whether you like the wrestling or not, or just want to see how I made this fat meal for myself. Saw the kitchen light on the back. Oh, got a haircut today. Uh, always nice to feel a little bit fuzzy instead of scruffy. So again today... Just came back from watching NXT here at Daytona Beach. fun match. Uh, the odd thing is, it's really a tale of two shows for some reason. But we'll get into that. Again, you start off, they have the autograph signing. Street Profits were there and some women from New Zealand. Who she was. I was kind of shocked because there was a pretty big turnout during the Daytona Beach. And the big crowd. I have a funny feeling that they were taping. There was a guy with a video camera. It was one of those mobile video cameras, and you would always follow the, the people and take crowd shots. So you might see Hobo Tom on the network. It would be scary because I should be banned from all types of media. Ooh, especially after eating all this fat, yummy, fake Mexican food. Didn't think they were taping. There were some actually really big matches tonight. Might even be on the network. I know they advertised for Adam Cole, baby! And he showed up. Candice LeRae was there. Number one in my book. Oh, well, kind of two because, but that's because they got rid of Princess Kimberly. Whole other, whole other issue of mine. Whatever. And Bezer was there, and the Kodaka was there. So again, they actually told you who was there, and kind of big names. Kind of good, because a weird time, I think some of them are off to Europe, so it's kind of a shock to see that. I guess that's a quick flight from at least the Eastern Keyboard if they're going to Europe. It's not too bad. It did seem like there were plants in crowds, because the crowd was really hot. So, I don't know. Some of these fans, hey, they have better promo skills than some wrestlers I've seen. 
What can you say? So let's start off the match. First night is a surf and turf match. One of these days I'll have little things going across. It was, again, a great opening match. It was Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch versus TM61. TM61s finally seem to be heels. I can't get enough of these yummy salsa fries and guacamole. I haven't eaten all day. This is my, kind of my dinner now. Then, yeah, very good technical counter wrestling match. Just ex like, expect like you'd see. Really fun. I'm gonna put in a whole bunch of clips. The guy with the camera was just walking around getting crowd shots. I got him in that. Again, a great crowd. Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch finally won. Pray for them. One, two, one, two. Great chance. The crowd was really loud today. I don't remember it being this loud until they until we were deleted. I want to announce her for screwing up Daytona Beach and calling it Cocoa Beach. If you want to get heat, call Daytona Beach Cocoa Beach and call Cocoa Beach Daytona Beach. Get, get the, the, the finger wag. And probably the shame. And then you're deleted! For your obsolete! Yes! Wonderful! Yes, Daytona Beach crowd. Delete her some more. I can match again. I was shocked. They had two, they had two surf and surf matches on back to back.
Candice LeRae versus Bianca Belair. There were dueling ch chants of EST Candice Wrestling, EST Candice Wrestling. <laughs> there were some two sweet chants, especially after, after the two count. There were a bunch of false finishes. One, two, sweet. Just a really amazing crowd reaction. I was shocked. Again, the basic heel tactics from Bianca Belair, who's doing really good. Candice LeRae, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Again, just tremendous. Good back and forth action. Classic Candice moves. Again, s s second match. It's just, just amazing. I couldn't believe it. Again, Candice LeRae won. Surf and surf match. Again, good back and forth action. Fun. I was just dumbstruck. I'm like, how are they going to top this? But they actually did. match three 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 yeah this was another match it was Williams and Donovan Dijak who seem to be I guess the tag team now versus Cutler and oh what's his face Blake from Blake and Murphy 
This is the Blake part. Cutler and Blake came out to an our Ring of Honor streamer entrance. Came in, streamers exploded. It's kind of fun. This is nice to see it. Bring, bring it to, to Ring of Honor. Time for a bite of burger. Again, a delicious guacamole and salsa burger. All right, cook perf. I'm good. I'm going to juice off my fingers. You definitely knew who the heel, who the heel was. All right, so put Mexico up. Cherry Mexico. They definitely know who the faces, who the heels were. You still suck chance, and you suck chance for a guy. The crowd probably took over this match. I mean, for this match, being these teams, I was amazed. The freaking loudest crowd ever. Dijak, I mean, just very creative. Just had, had a, a knee party. This is fun. I mean, the one chant, cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. One, of course, whatever they're called, the forgotten whoever they are. It's cheating. Just really good. And you kind of expected Don and Dijak to take the loss. It's, it's This time, finally, heels win. It'd be weird if there was three face wins in a row. Yeah, this is just a stack card. The fourth match, and eh, it was kind of a cheeseburger match. Cheeseburger, yum. Raul Mendoza is probably one of the greatest workers willing to work anywhere, anytime, versus Tomo Maso Ciampa. Ciampa Bomaye. 
I was cheering for for Tommaso. Oh my god. Again, so it's a classic Hilo versus face. Champa hit the Tommaso driver or Champa driver. Put four out. It was, it, was, it was kind of fun. It was kind of one sided. Kind of what you expect it should be. Kind of not a squash match, but pretty darn close to it. Johnny Gargano came running out from the crowd, though, after Raul Mendoza got stuck in the Gargano escape from Tommaso Champa. I guess in previous tapings, Tommaso Champa did something to. Johnny Gargano's neck, probably the Tommaso driver. It was good. He came out of the crowd running, made the save. Hey, good face move. Cut a good promo. We'll see what happens. The fifth match was a filet mignon match. Again, I was so shocked that this card was so stacked.
So flaming on it was the three prophets versus the undisputed era of Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. Just amazing. I mean, I don't know how they how they could put on anything less than a surf and surf match. I mean, for being a host show, I mean, this could have been on any pay per view show, any takeover. Heck, you could have put this on a dark match for any WWE pay per view. Awesome. Again, just really fun. I'm glad Bobby Fish wasn't wrestling there. The last time he was here, he got busted open. I think Kyle O'Reilly. I think he fell on Kyle O'Reilly's knee and kind of busted, busted. Bust him up, bled the hard way. The ref put up the X. Because again, who was a legend in injury? It was kind of wonky. But again, it was just really fun. Um, good match, good ground action, great tag team work. just hard to say it was bad. It was awesome. It was, it was a good chance. Again, TV quality, pay-per-view quality. I couldn't believe it. And Kyle Wright is definitely the striker. Roderick Strong is definitely technician. So you have a really good dichotomy and a really good balance in the tag team. And fast tags. Great, great classic tag team action. Um, the rest holds, they, he was yanking on stuff. I mean, I know it's a rest hold, but it was a wrestle with purpose, at least. It was, it was good. It's just not like, oh, boring. It's like, whoa, that hurts. That, or at least it looked like it hurt. Then you have the Street Profits. Again, once they got the upper hand, same thing. Good tags, good action. A blind tag. But, but a lot of false finishes. Strong and Kyle O'Reilly win. Again, but at, at the end, the Street Profits got a huge face pop because they looked like they got beaten down. Come up, the crowd cheered. Murray came up, clapped. Awesome. Flaming on match. I couldn't believe it. I think this led to our intermission, which I was kind of shocked at because the show was going really quick. And I looked at my watch, and I'm like, whoa, it's like 8.50. I only have like half an hour for two matches. So it was weird how fast. I was amazed how fast the ropes. Again, they had to come out, adjust the ropes. There, there, there were a lot of botches. I don't think they had the ring set up right, either that or the humidity really screwed up stuff. Because again, this is Florida. It gets very humid here. I know it's kind of been drizzly all day. Because anyone who went off any of the ropes, uh, Blake and Cutler had a screw up on their double team finisher move. Kyle O'Reilly. Oh no, Dijak also had, had kind of a botch. When you tried to do something off the top rope and just slipped. Someone else had a botch trying to do a slingshot. 
ropes, they just didn't set, they, they, they didn't set it up right for some reason. It was what it was. It could have been the humidity. You never know. So again, it's, just, it's not that bad. It's not like, it's like the crowd kind of caught it a little bit. And they realized, I think, hey, the weather here in Florida sucks in May. Guess what? It rains. It hasn't been hot and humid. And I'm kind of eating my fries, too, when I'm doing this. Because, again, I haven't eaten all day. Oh, guacamole salsa. Mm. Yeah. More salsa fries. Very good. Six match. Another flaming young man. I cannot believe it. The Velveteen Dream versus Ricochet came to Daytona Beach. And they put on one heck of a match. I personally feel lucky to say that I've seen Ricochet, or King Ricochet, or Prince Puma wrestle twice. I'm just, I'm just amazing. The crowd went absolutely bonkers. Even before the match started. This is awesome. This is awesome. And they're just staring each other down and both wrestlers were like, yeah, this is the way it should be. And they looked like they were enjoying themselves. I mean, if, if you have that kind of crowd, even before the bell rings, I mean, you're just going to have fun, and you're loving it. They were eating it up. Just amazing, though. And again, they look like they're having fun. Again, a really pay-per-view quality match for Daytona Beach. Yeah! 
Amazing! They finally let's listen to us, WWE. Put on good house shows, they will come. Yeah, pay per view level quality. This could have highlighted any takeover almost. And minus a few matches. He had the body muffler slam from Ricochet to the People's Backflip. I think that's what it's called. It's either that or the People's Five Star Splash or something like that. It's the People's Backflip. Fun, fun. I mean, the dream did the Bobby and the ravishing Rick Rude, Hivel Swip over Ricochet. I should have shut up and you guys can watch this match. Kind of a surprise that ended in a spine buster reversal to a pin. Ricochet won. Amazing. Fifth match. Was was the German guy Marcel versus Alistair Black? It is what it was. It was watch match.
It was a hamburger match. I'm not going to say anything else. It was almost cheeseburger, but just not quite much. So this is your rating. You get a hamburger. my video next match, next match. Dakota Kai versus Shannon Baszler for the women's women's heavy women's belt whatever they call it
this was kind of like the, the low point of the mat. I know Shane and Baszler is really good. It was just really a whole bunch of submission holds. And yeah, and you can probably also have this on any pay per view. It's not going to headline it like the Ricochet Velveteen Dream match. This was really good. It was, uh, it, it, well, it's not really good. It was okay. It was a ham sandwich. I mean, Shannon Baszler just kind of kept on working leg submissions. And that was, that was a little story. She kicked the bejesus out of Dakota Kai's knee. Dakota Kai got some early offense, some quick kicks in. Shannon Baszler said, I'm not having that. I'm going to break something. She tried to break her legs. That's all it was. It was kind of an eight-minute, I'm going to put you in every leg lock that I know of, every leg lock, ankle breaker, ankle hold. I mean, it, it was okay. It was what it was. Next, we have the main event. And it was some Italian guy. And this was a cheeseburger match. This is kind of kind of weird because, again, I'll get into this in, once, once I finish this review, but you know, it was a cheeseburger match. And it had Adam Cole, baby, versus some Italian guy.
And again, Adam Cole is just amazing on the mic. I mean, if it wasn't Adam Cole, and even Andrade Cien Almas or Drew McIntyre held the belt and wrestled this guy, it'd be like a ham sandwich or even toast. Adam Cole, baby! And every time the crowd had a chance to, and Adam Cole, baby! Allowed him to. They said, Adam Cole, baby! And he's just such a good in ring performer. He knows how to talk to people. He knows his, he has great ring presence. He has great character awareness. It was good, though. It just, you're like, who is this guy and why is he going for the world title? Here in Daytona Beach? Eh, eh. You're not gonna switch titles here in Daytona Beach. I might be a mark, but I'm not the I'm, I'm not a stupid mark. I'm the other mark. I'm a smart, smart mark. I tried to think about this. Again, with this, the crowd kind of tried to take over the match. And and then the other guy had like the NXT level on his tights. Uh eh, whatever. I'll tell you what though. That belt looks amazing. It looks like one of the old school title belts where it looked just like the, the the ribbon with a medal in the middle. And it was just, it looks good. And I know I know certain belts look good, but this belt just looks good. It looks like a, looks like a championship belt. Even more so than an XT title does. Again, I think someone shouted out, Michael Cole, baby! I got a chuckle from everyone. Some guy said, Adam Cole, you're fat. And Adam Cole broke character. He just started to laugh. laugh. You can see him say, What? Looked on and say, I'm not fat? It was just funny. Again, just a bunch of Adam Cole, babies! all throughout. So hopefully my timing was okay. It's time to start editing. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. It's time to start editing. Hopefully I get this video up while it's still Cinco de Mayo. Be safe if you're going to have a lot of cherry mix colas. Be safe. Have fun.
little bonus clip at the end. Go to my Cinco de Mayo celebration, my, my fake celebration. Bye, everyone. Okay, step one of my Cinco de Mayo feast is going to be getting the salsa fries ready. A little bonus video for all those who watched, who's watching my video, yay! Yes, my kitchen is a mess. Again, flying Hobo Tom, but at least I know how to cook for myself. First step, making salsa fries because the salsa will just make French fries soggy. And then we'll batch them up there. Oh yeah. You guys will probably watch me eat this while I'm making my video. And hopefully the video will go up sometime on Saturday. So here we have a nice little better French fries. Set the oven because I am a hobo cook. I don't care about the pre-warm. I set it so 430 degrees Fahrenheit. Put these back in the freezer for next week. Let's see here. So about six minutes left. So while that's cooking up, put my little hobo shoes here, my little Ocean Pacific sandals. For all those in YouTubeville. Let's see here. Go head outside. And what I like to do is, and I know it's dark because it is dark outside. I just got home from NXT Daytona, which you will get my reviews on. It was, it was kind of neat. It was, a, it was like a show of two shows. Ah, uh, yes, the grill. Actually, I better close that door or else my cat will cook and that would be very bad. So again, what I like to do Whoa, lights. It is while the french fries are firing up. Let those cook for a while. Take off the old grill cover. No, it's dark outside, so it's not like you're going to see much. Anyway, if you have a grill, you know they have a grill cover. I do. So you gotta turn the propane on. Again, you're not missing much, even though it's in the black. I'm burn one slit. Burn our two never fires up on time. There we go. Up, oh, got all three going. Okay, so that's step one. Gonna let this burn. If you wanna scrape it just a little bit. Get the last thing I cooked on it. Get it nice and sterile. And then we're going to go put some burgers on it in a little bit. Bye. Okay, now for part two. Again, because it is Cinco de Mayo. Gonna have some Mexicola. Again, I apologize. I've been kind of busy a little bit. A nice frosty glass left in the freezer all day filled with ice. Have uh, probably a decent tequila. And because I am how about Tom? And some cherry cola. So very simple. I hope everyone can see this. I hope the camera angles this right. All you do, open up ooh, fancy tequila bottle here. It's a complex tequila bottle. Does this actually have a cork in it? This stuff might actually have a cork in it. Uh oh. Find out really soon. See, so somehow always remember open your tequila bottle. That's good. This one you actually have to break the seal. So I'm gonna take a look and see. This one, ooh, this one's actually all sealed up. That's pretty cool. Ah, cork. Classy. Stay classy, clones. Again, quote from the Jim Rome show. You can count to about three, two and a half. I don't use jiggers unless I kind of guess around. I just know you ain't much tequila with ice. You don't want to get drunk too quickly, and tequila can be lethal. Again, 
Mexican cherry cola. Very simple, tequila. Cherry cola of choice, and Sam's choice. Can't afford cherry cola or the Pepsi cherry stuff, which is actually really good. And there is your cherry mex cola. Bye. And next up here we have a nice little empty plate. What I always like to do before I make my burgers, have some nice cheap Kaiser buns. I tried tostadas, I tried using um, corn tortillas before, they just take way too long to cook. I'm lazy. Kaiser bun, I always like to start prepping stuff and arrange it. So I have my bottom on the plate, top by its side. So I cut for my girlfriend, even though she had to work. I'm gonna make a nice little four of them. And pretty simple stuff. I still have the fries cooking in the oven, unsalsified. Bread's mm. good. Bread's good for you guys. You make this a double, you can just put the two hamburger patties on. There. Back. Whoa. Back in the freezer it goes. Can't show you this because YouTube would probably ban me. And you have your nice 85 15 burger. Again, kind of okay stuff. It's not too bad. Back up to the grill. Here you go. Grill should be nice and warm at least. All the bacteria should have been cooked off by now by three open flames. Oh, there's the grill light. I don't know if you saw that. that nasty grass and God knows what kind of insects living in this grass. Always put on, always put on your flip flops here in Florida. And kind of really basic. There you go, got the flames going, lights on, burgers be ready. The trick I found with open gas grills that you never put the burger, especially the lean, the kind of unlean stuff, you put it up top. Not there, up there. And this way you're not getting direct flame ups, it's kind of an indirect he heating way. And the other thing I actually forgot. But I seasoning meat. Season on top. So use your always salt and pepper your food. And then we'll go in. See, no flare ups. Burger to there. Going nicely. It's a little dark. We'll go inside. Look at my burgers kind of ready and stuff. So. Right, very insulting. I like the hot salsa. Guacamole, it's always very really yummy. And I'm trying to live better. Some nice sliced mild cheddar cheese. So what I do on the bottoms is a little on the runny side. I always use the salsa first. And I get a spoon. Try and get the chunky stuff. One of the bombs are already on the plate. Mmm, yummy salsa. A 
and I'll use this for something else later. So after you remember, after you open stuff, always go back in the refrigerator. And then we salsa. These are the four bottom buns. I'm going to use the salsa, so I'm going to keep it out for a little bit because I'm going to put this over the fry. I just want the fries to cook. Oh, wow, I already got to 430 degrees. That's good. So it must have beeped. Use this. Again, salt. You can't have salsa fries without salsa. Put on my little fish spoon. And if you like the cheese, cheeseburgers. So yummy cheese here. I know you can't see it right now. My kitchen's kind of small and it's a mess because I haven't had a chance to clean it up yet. Now I'm not a fan of melting cheese because I think it takes away from the texture. And that's kind of one's whole perspective on things. If you want to melt it, be my guest. I don't. I like to have the burger and their natural juices melt it myself. Although I do like to have plenty of cheese on it. I want to taste the cheese. Eat so I have the bottoms done. So I, <laughs> I have the bottoms done. And I'll put the salsa. This will probably be snacked on some fries because it doesn't keep that well unless you put some extra lime or lemon juice so it doesn't churn. It's not browns and it's kind of disgusting looking. Put smear on top. Each of the top sides. I'll probably this on the side. I have my salsa, salsa fries with guacamole. Guacamole will actually cool it off a little bit. It's pretty good. Mm, yum. More cheese. No such thing as too much cheese. No such the two things you cannot have. You know, the two things you absolutely cannot have enough of is red wine and toilet paper. The cheese will probably come a close third. They gave you nine slices. I don't know why they do that. This one, bye bye. Going for a quick dunk. I'm hungry. So, well, fries are cooking. You go outside. The burger is one flip. Now remember, you don't want to press the burgers because you're going to press all the juice out of them. You don't want to flip them over a thousand times. I only like to flip it once. And I think the grill's thermostat with all three burners, I think it's like 500 degrees, so it's a really fast, quick sear. And let's see what's going on here. Probably can't see that, but it's right about 500 degrees. The hot grill. As you can see, there's no big flame ups. Burgers are juicing nicely. There's no pure open flames. I don't like to over season it. Flip. flip. There's a little flame shooting up. Flame shooting up. My smoke. So you're gonna lower, I'm gonna put it back on low because they're gonna sit there for a little bit, but you don't want to turn it off. And now you let it cook for a little bit longer. We we'll go inside and. And now I'm not a brave or stupid man. Always wear your oven glove. Do not burn yourself. Don't be stupid. Probably see that steam. Fries are somewhat crispy here. Spatula, what I like to do. Oh, yeah, see, they're crisping up nice. You can tell they're crispy because they're sliding kind of right off the pan and not sticking to it. So, because they're making salsa fries, just like to bunch them in towards one side. That down there. And you can't have salsa fries without some salsa. But it doesn't matter if the juice gets on because the juice will just kind of. That right away anyway, and leave kind of all the good chunky stuff there. Got a pretty big jar. I'll probably save this. 
probably for some dinner on Tuesday when I have soup. Of some, of some chicken soup and salsa crackers. Sounds good. It's pretty well covered. You don't have to cover the whole thing. It's going to spread up by itself. And you do want some cold fries. I, I at least like to have some cold fries. You go in the dishwasher. I'm lazy. I don't feel like cleaning things right away. Just put them in the dishwasher. You go in the refrigerator. Use for another time somewhere. Refrigerator's getting crowded. Don't feel that one break and shatter. Well, I do because I like this stuff to be cooked. It's still at 4:30. Spin it around. All that juice off. Back in the oven it goes. Now see the good thing about having the grill at 500 degrees is that it tends to cook a lot quicker. You just have to make sure you don't dry it out. So again, it's only been really a couple of minutes. I just set, set some stuff aside, got things prepped and ready. Back out here. I do off heat, off heat, off heat. I do not need gas explosions. Along the side of the house, that'd be bad. Turn the tank off. Things go poof. I do just give them one more quick flip. Kind of let them steam a little bit. But it's on the bottom grate. Notice the heat's off. They're not cooking it. They're just doing this really just more for the marks. And they get kind of the juice off the top. So they're kind of searing in all the juice. I'm impressed. Let it cook there for a second or two. Might not the best. Some purists do like to put the burger right onto the bun part. I can't handle that much stuff at once. I'm not super corny like that. Something's gonna fall and hit the grass and be ant food, ant chowder. Those freaking squirrels will take it. My burger's all set. Always let that outside. Back in. Get the cat away from the door. Keep the cat away from the burgers. Who knows what's going through her mind. And then we're going to start to plate stuff up. So this is the fun part. Yay! It took about 20 minutes preparation. Not that bad. Because it's cooked. I know I left my spatula out there. I still have the spatula I use for the french fries. It's only french fries, guys. It's not going to do anything. I know. One food, one utensil. Where did I put that utensil anyway? Oh, there it is. You know where the bottom is. Burger. Burger. Burger, you can still use it. It's just a little pink. Ooh, you can actually smell the spices. 